Hey guys, how's it dilly dillin? Ed Bud here, I'm back with a review of the ASICS Glide Ride. So my full review today, I've only reached about 55 miles in this shoe, typically I'd like to get up to 100, but I've just got too many shoes on the test bed, there's too many, they're crying out for me, they're saying, Ed, please put us on, do some miles, get out there, test us out and let the viewers know. The shoes aren't actually talking to me, I haven't quite reached that pinnacle of madness quite yet. I think I'm getting closer though. So before I start, would I recommend this shoe? Well, yes I would, but I don't think this shoe is gonna be for everybody. It's not gonna be to everybody's taste. Talking of taste, I know a lot of the viewers out there have really been enjoying my album kind of rundowns, you know, my, my running playlists, uh, my recommendations. One I picked up very recently is an album I used to have some time back. Um, it's by DJ Shadow, it's called Introducing. Really fantastic, very atmospheric kind of album. I find it really great for running. It's got the right kind of tempos, that kind of real groove. You can really lock in and kind of zone out and concentrate on those paces that you're trying to achieve. So really great album. If you can pick it up, it's kind of a little bit more interesting really than the cover makes out. Um, it's a really great kind of instrumental based hip hop album. Uh, DJ Shadow, really fantastic producer. And another bit of a wild card I really love, Sounds Incorporated from back in the 60s. These guys were a killer band. They supported the likes of Little Richard and even Cilla Black. Uh, there's a fantastic Little Richard live performance where they accompanied him. A six piece group uh, with three on brass. Fantastic, really need to check these guys out if you like that 60s kind of beat sound. Back on to shoes now. Very easy for me to get sidetracked on music. I really do love music. So first up, this shoe is very structured. It's rather bulky. It's got lots of padding around this heel area. Not all runners are gonna enjoy the rather constrictive and sort of rigid construction of this ASICS shoe. It's weighty and at first it's very present on the foot, I will say that. I think taller runners such as myself are gonna feel quite high off the ground in this shoe. I mean, you can see there, the midsole and outsole is very high. There's quite a, a stack there in the back heel. That stack, in fact, reminded me of when I first put on the Vaporfly 4%. I was kind of right up here, you know, I'm a bit of a giraffe anyway, guys. I'm about six foot three. I smash my head on door frames and things all the time. Uh, I was chatting about this to uh, the Forrester Dean runner, Andy, the other day. You know, we're both very tall guys. Main reason I bought my house is because it's got really high doors, but I felt really, really tall in this shoe. I think the ride takes a little bit of getting used to. I personally think it's very reminiscent of the original Zoom Fly by Nike or maybe the Carbon X. It's got that curved forefoot area here where you feel like you're kind of falling off the edge of a stair or maybe off the edge into oblivion, something like that. Certainly walking in this shoe is odd, but it's a running shoe, so you're probably not gonna be walking in it. People always talk about these, I mean, walking in it's weird. Walking this, are you? It's just, just absurd. You know, nobody's gonna pop down the pub and play a nice game of billiards, bit of light conversation while wearing this shoe, are they? Although that bulky construction here is quite considerable, the shoe kind of reminds me of kind of late 60s, early 70s hi-fi equipment. It's certainly built to last, and I've seen no degradation whatsoever of the materials in this shoe up to now. It's a very well-made shoe. It must be said, I'm a very slight dude. I think I weigh probably about maybe 11 and a half stone, something like that, six foot three. So wear tends to be relatively light on any running shoes that I have. I think on foot that five mil drop that you have in this shoe isn't really that noticeable. ASICs seem to suggest that wearing this shoe is going to kind of alter your stride really. I think they're partly right there. Well, I didn't feel as if I was having to change my stride or gait that drastically. I found this shoe far more effective when sort of driving at it with a bit of pace. Somewhere over 7 minutes 30 per mile up to about 7 minutes per mile it really does start to kind of propel you forward. It, there's a propulsive feeling then in the midsole. I think the initial thought of getting this shoe was that it would eat up those miles. I could do longer runs at maybe a slightly lesser pace so that I could um, kind of rack up some greater distance really. Um, I want to start training 
for a marathon attempt or at least two marathon attempts in 2020. So this is really the use case for me for this shoe. As I say, I found this shoe far more exciting as I started to push the pace in it a little. I think the Glide Ride does draw a lot of comparisons with the Carbon X, although there are some considerable differences there too. Come to me, come to me. Ah, oh, old friend, old friend. I'll tell you what guys, just even in hand, this shoe is way, way lighter than the Glide Ride. I think in terms of price, comfort and feel on foot, the shoes aren't that dissimilar, but that weight is quite considerably different. I think that does become an issue when you've certainly been racing in some lighter shoes, the Glide Ride is a much heavier shoe. I mean, that could benefit you in training, it could increase that strength, it's always nice to put on a very light racing shoe, have some real difference there between the shoes that you're training in and the ones that you race in. When I weighed these up, the Carbon X comes in at around 243 grams and the Glide Ride was around about 322. So a bit of a golf there in terms of the weight and it's quite noticeable when your time's out by two. I think you could certainly use the Carbon X for racing, you could also use it for training. I think the weight really is going to cut out any kind of racing use for the Glide Ride. That aside, I think the Glide Ride Upper is way more comfortable than the Carbon X. And I think better forefoot and heel kind of lockdown is achieved within the Glide Ride. Uh, the lacing system's really great. It does really lock down over the top of the forefoot. I think it's a better out the box shoe than the Carbon X. I needed to break that Carbon X shoe in uh, for a couple of weeks really on some longer runs to get it feeling kind of mellow and really nice underfoot. This was fantastic, uh, really usable straight out of the box. I think fit is true to size really for me. I went for a UK 11, so that's a US 12. Not really much else to say on that aspect. Nice roomy toe box at the front of the shoe here. I've experienced absolutely no discomfort, no pain, no rubbing, blistering, nothing with this shoe so far. I don't anticipate getting any either. I think this is a really, really comfortable and well-made quality shoe. Lacing is really on point here. Once tightened up, you don't need to mess about with it. You forget it. I've never had to adjust it or readjust it or mess around with it during a run. Um, so kudos to ASICS on that. So there's two different types of foam here, Flight Foam and Flight Foam Propel. I think the combination's a winner. That Flight Foam Propel compresses quite a great deal and the other not quite so much. This makes for a ride, bizarrely to me, not that dissimilar to the Pegasus Turbo. No, I haven't lost my mind. I do think that they are relatively similar to me. I think it's soft, it's cushioned, it's a real joy to run in. This kind of plastic plate section here isn't overly present on foot really. You don't feel it that much. Although when you do start to push the pace, I think it does give you a little snap. That AHA rubber here shows absolutely no signs of wear whatsoever. I think you could probably get, you know, upwards of four or 500 miles out of this shoe. One in comparison to the Carbon X, I don't think anyone's gonna get anywhere near that much. Even after 100 miles for me on the Carbon X, there was some considerable signs of wear in that kind of forefoot area. You can even kind of see where the fork is actually positioned in the uh, midsole. I think this rubber's got carbon injected into it, so it should, in theory, last a hell of a long time. I found it very grippy on pavements and roads, and it's provided good contact there. Feels great, gives you some really good traction. So, overall, the pros, very durable, Great comfort, fit and feel. I think there's some good aesthetic appeal to this shoe. Maybe not now it's completely coated in mud. I think it works at most paces, so relatively versatile. Not sure I'd want to wear it for a 5K though. This is a really comfortable shoe in terms of the upper. It's really plush inside. Asics really nailed it there. To the cons, it's certainly a weighty shoe. It does feel quite present on foot when you first put it on. You do get used to it, but it certainly feels present initially. I think with the price, it's gonna put a few people off, I think, on a shoe that's gonna be mainly used only for training. Other cons? Well, I don't really feel there's that many other cons. I think perhaps if you're watching this review, you're already thinking about getting the Glide Ride and it's probably the shoe for you. I think it's certainly quite versatile. I think it's better in terms of something like the Zoom Fly 3. Certainly softer than the Zoom Fly Flyknit or the Carbon X. I think you'll find this a much 
more comfortable shoe than the stiff and rigid Carbon X. I found that it really benefits me when I start to hit that sort of fatigue stage and my form starts to suffer a little bit. This shoe really helps. There's a bit of a price difference there between the Zoom Fly 3 and this. I think I'll probably go for this really. Um, I think there are better options for a faster tempo shoe than the Zoom Fly 3. Do I like this shoe better than the Carbon X? Well, I think if I had to go for one, I'd probably go for the Carbon X. <gasps> that weight is a bit of a factor. I think over the longer miles, I think the Carbon X would do better, but you're gonna get more miles overall out of this shoe. I think I'd go with this shoe perhaps for my training, those longer miles. It's just gonna eat up those miles and then utilize the Carbon X if I was gonna race. This one's certainly gonna stay in my rotation as I up the miles now. I think that's something I need to do in terms of training my legs, more strength, greater duration in terms of the length of the runs, uh, some lower paces. Um, some interesting things with heart rate really as well. I've noticed um, that looking at the math training method, um, my heart rate basically I should be aiming for about a 145 if I was going to do some heart rate training which is pretty much spot on. The other day uh, two 10 mile runs at 7 minutes 30 per mile and it was right in there at 145 beats per minute so really pleased with that. I'm not sure what that says um, whether I can push myself much harder perhaps uh, when I'm doing tempo or interval work but really quite interesting there. Hope you've enjoyed this review guys. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. Comment below if you're thinking about getting the glide rides. If you've got any further questions you want to ask me about the shoe, I'm more than happy to answer them. So please post below. Share this video with any runners or friends you may have that you think might enjoy it. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.